All right. Welcome, Welcome to the Daily Close. Welcome to the Daily Close. Where we discuss what's happening in the market, give you guys some alpha, and uh, we discuss some TA and, and where we think price action is going to be heading in the next few days and weeks. Um, yes. Today, we have myself, Forex Infinite Bid, and we have Crypto Bushi on the channel. Um, let's jump straight into it because I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, this is a very exciting weekend, actually. This past week was very exciting as well. Um, yeah, what, what happened this weekend or this, this past week? Um, so, I mean, we've, we've had a bit of flip-flopping around with, um, <laughs> with market sentiment, you know, people flipping bullish and then bearish every time there's a, there's a price dip and there's a, there's a price rise. Um, but I think in general, no one really knows what, what's going on. You know, some people still say we're in the bull market. Mm. Some people still say, you know, some people say that we're, we're heading into a bear market now. Um, but, you know, and you've got a lot of people talking about this, this Wyckoff um, distribution and Wyckoff accumulation um, here on, on, on the screen as well. So right. maybe that's something we can talk, talk about first. Okay. So how would you describe the Wyckoff um, accumulation chart? Like, why is this so uh, significant now? And, and I think there's something that we've been hearing a lot on crypto Twitter. Um, but why do you think this is now like sort of a signal um, of what's happening right now? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the top, I mean, we'll go back, we'll go into the charts a little bit later, but if you, if you look at the, the top that, um, you know, Bitcoin made, that looks very much like a, a Wyckoff distribution. Um, oh, distribution. Do you want me to pull up yeah. the uh, Bitcoin chart as well? Just to kind of um, give... Now, maybe we could do a bit later. Um, I guess let's just run through um, this this um, Wyckoff accumulation first. Um, so, yeah, it looks like we, we came in from the Wyckoff distribution um, and now we're heading into accumulation phase. And I think this can take months. I don't expect the market just to bounce back straight away. Um, you know, if, mm -hmm. if you are bullish in this market, then accumulation and, and um, consolidation is, is something that you, you want because you don't want unsustainable price um, unsustainable price action, which is, you know, basically just making a, a V recovery. Um, so I think if we, if we get some accumulation and we, and we get some, um, and, and if, you know, we follow the Wyckoff structure here, it's probably healthy for the market for the next month or two. Um, but in, in my opinion, I don't think we're done with the bull run yet. I mean, if we retest the lows and then we fail to hold, then probably <laughs> the bull market's probably looking a lot, a lot like it's, it wants to, mm. um, finish but as of now I'm, I'm still pretty i still hold my long-term bullish sentiment um i just think we are entering a, a sort of boring phase where you know price is accumulating and, and just consolidating yeah yeah i think i think the same as well i'm pretty bullish um on what's happening in the market i think if you if you go into crypto twitter or if you're looking at different news sources whether it's you know coindesk coin telegram or um sort of mainstream uh, news channels like uh, Financial Times or Wall Street. Um, yeah, I, I think you'll get sort of both ends of it, right? Some people calling it calling this to be the end of the, the bull run. So, I mean, how would you how would you personally play this type of situation? Um, and why do you think the dump happened? Why do you think we're in this accumulation phase now? Like, how does this all play out? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people say, you know, that the price dump was was based off Elon's tweet, um, you know, about Bitcoin and, and the whole narrative around how it's not very um, eco-friendly or environmental friendly. But I think we were sort of like, the chart itself and the technical analysis just looked a little bit toppy. Um, you know, we were creating sort of like a, a bearish market structure as well, um, which, you know, I, I think we have to look at the technical analysis um, separately to what's happening fundamentally. And, um, mm. you know, I think we were, we were, you know, due a, a big correction like this anyway. Um, you know, price, we went 6x in, in the span of um, three, four months on Bitcoin. Right. Um, which is pretty parabolic. But, Same. you know, yeah, I mean, we were just due a correction. And I think that Elon 
tweet was just a catalyst um, to bring us back down to, you know, right the, the previous highs of, of the last couple of months. Yeah, I mean, you have the Elon tweet, you have the China FUD, um, just one after another. And so I guess the price just sank uh, quite significantly, right? We had like oh, a, a top of like 60K to a bottom of like what? 31? Yeah. 31? Mm. Yeah. I, I would say though, this is where smart money, smart money is accumulating. You know, institutions are definitely buying around this level. Mm. Um, so, so do you agree? Because there's been a lot of uh, commentary on how this has all been sort of manipulation by the whales, um, that this is just sort of part of their strategy to accumulate more coins at the bottom at a, you know, at a discount basically. thing. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I do. Um, you know, you had the, the 4chan sort of uh, conspiracy. Yeah, what, what was that exactly? Where, um, you know, some big players in China um, wanted to dump the price. I think it was like for, for revenge on something. Um, well, just to prove a point. But yeah, I mean, at, at this level, you know, there's institutions that were hesitant at buying at high prices are definitely accumulating here. Um, you know, this is where the smart money is buying right now. Um, a lot of new retail that entered the market in the last few months probably panic sold. Mm. Um, and yeah, definitely, you know, that's that's where smart money comes in and, and buys it all up at a cheaper price. Um, I do think we're going to go back up. It's just going to take a bit more time, maybe one or two months. Um, it's very reminiscent of 2017, um, you know, where we had a lull during the, the summer. And then, you know, towards the end of the year, we picked right back up again um, for like a parabolic move up so yeah i think that's where the i think that's where the market is right now um do i think the ball ball, ball runs over um uh, no do i think it's going to take some time to recover i do um but you know no one knows <laughs> at the end of the day that's true uh, no one does know we i mean this past week we did see a short uptrend right um for Bitcoin and then the rest of the alts as well. We did get a bounce back. Um, and you know, as we are recording this over the weekend, we are just into another dip. So it does look um, quite similar to the sort of accumulation um, chart, that wick off chart. And um, this doesn't say that this will be exactly how the chart will, will go, right? Um, but it's kind of just sort of a, uh, an example. Yeah. Um, we are now at the bottom of the, uh, the the low end of the range. Yeah, I, I think we're I think we're close. I think we're close. Um, if this isn't the bottom, I do think we're close. Um, if we don't hold, you know, 30k, um, I would expect us to fall to like 25k, 20k. I know that sounds super <laughs> super bearish, but um, you know that's yeah. that's how I'm looking at it right now. Uh, but. I mean, on on the on the flip side, I, you know, I don't think we, I don't think we test that though. I right. think we just consolidate here and then, and then move back up. So, you know, for, for the new people that are getting into crypto, um, I think that, you know, I, I always talk about um, dollar cost averaging in DCA, um, and I think to do it here is is probably you know the best move you can make. Um, yeah. Well, you've always made good calls, so uh, definitely follow your lead. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know about that. I'm still pretty new. Well, I, I came into the market in 2017, so I've kind of experienced um, the whole bull bear right. cycle. Um, so I'm just going off experience, but you know, that's that's where I think. Yeah, I mean, experience comes a long way, uh, definitely. So we'll go into the charts and look at them specifically. I'm going to analyze them later, just in TA later. Um, but what, what else has happened this past week that you think is quite significant? Um, well, we've had quite a lot of news. I mean, there's a bit of, been a big build up around um, L2s, uh, L2 scaling solutions. Um, so for people who don't know what L2s are, um, they're basically side chains of Ethereum. Um, you know, you've got this massive issue of Ethereum gas um, costing, you know, so much money that it outprices all the retail people who want to come in. Sometimes you're paying, you know, at least $20 per transaction. Um, at, the, at the height, it was probably like two hundred, three hundred dollars per transaction on Uniswap, which is which is absolutely crazy. Um, mm. So you know, there's a big narrative shift over to, to L2s right now. Um, and one of the more recent pieces of news is is Arbitrum going live. Um, All right, let me uh, just pull that up real quickly. 
Yeah, um, Arb Arbitrum is is kind of like a game changer. I mean, we've had Polygon and we've seen, you know, massive influx of, of capital into Polygon, you know, since the since Aave launched on Polygon and also SushiSwap launched on Polygon. Um, you know, TVL has increased massively and there's been a lot of, um, you know, monetary velocity that's, that's come with that. But Arbitrum kind of changes the game again on Ethereum. Um, so Arbitrum is a layer two scaling solution um, which is EVM compatible, um, which basically means that the, the D apps, the dApps that have been built on Ethereum can move straight over um, to Arbitrum. You know, effort. straight over. So, what do you mean exactly? So, if you were, do they need to tech, do another you know, program completely on a different platform or they just copy paste? Like, how, how exactly do you think that works? I mean, is it going to be so Polygon, for example, is a completely different side chain, right? Um, it doesn't use the Ethereum mainnet, um, so there's a lot of development that, happen, that needs to happen on Polygon. But for Arbitrum, you're saying that that is not required; that people can just sort of shift over um, without heavy development. Yeah, I mean, um, Arbitrum is is built on Ethereum. You know, it, it's secured by Ethereum. Um, it holds the same value on ethos as, as ethereum um and it's it's you know decentralized like ethereum too i know some people will argue that ethereum isn't decentralized and it's you know controlled mainly by vitalik um <laughs> so developer yeah yeah but you know it does share the same decentralization values as, as ethereum as well whereas polygon is is built on a, on a side chain that is that works adjacently to ethereum sure so there there are some small differences but um you know, I think Arbitrum changes the game. Um, it's going to scale Ethereum, so you know transaction costs are going to massively drop. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you've got a lot of other bullish news for Ethereum as well. Um, you know, coming in the summer and at the end of this year, namely, um, you know, EIP fifteen fifty nine, um, which aims to tackle the the um, miners. You know, gaining profit from users on on Uniswap and and Dexes, mm -hmm. and also. If 2.0, you know, the move from proof of work over to proof of stake as well. So, oh, yeah, that's kind of big. Lots of bullish news for Ethereum. Um, if you don't have Ethereum, I would definitely start stacking Ethereum, especially during this dip. It's it's like the perfect time to to actually um, get in while you can, while it's still under under 5k. <laughs> Basically, yeah, it's a massive discount. So let's jump into some of the charts. Um, let's look at Bitcoin um, because what typically typically happens is you know, the altcoins follow Bitcoin. Um, you know, Bitcoin has typically been the king in the market. Um, and that's certainly the case here. Everything seems to be following it. So, um, you know, let, let's have a look. I think CryptoBushi is going to do a bit of technical analysis for you and, you know, um, give you some targets. All right. Yeah. So looking at this chart, uh, we'll see obviously the uh, big dip from uh, about 60K here with um, Bitcoin down to where we're, where we're at right now, which is about 35K, 35.5K. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, just looking at this real quickly, you can see that there's a really beautiful trend that goes on here. And then um, what previously served as support around the 42-ish K mark, um, after it went down to 30K, went back up, it served that same support line served as resistance and we didn't break through. So again, we, we basically uh, failed that resist, failed that test and uh, shot back down further to uh, about 31K. And so now we're playing this range. Um, what's gonna be really critical here is that um, I think we need to break through this resistance line around 42. I'm just saying, Zoom in uh, more. Um, this is going to be a quick key key level here because um, until we break through this 42, we're probably going to be ranging in this in this area between previous resistance and uh, the support line down here. So this is what we we're seeing at the moment. It's probably going to continue for uh, days, maybe weeks, um, until we can actually break through break through the resistance. Um, 
Yeah, and th there's no sort of real, you know, market structure going on here. You know, when we had the big fall, you know, there's definitely a, a bearish market structure going on. Um, you know, with with high lows and and sorry, low lows and low highs. Right. Um, but you know, here here if we if we're looking at the the range here, um, you know, we we need to make a high high really before we can really start getting bullish and, and running up to, you know, the 42 came up. Um, mm. You know, I would say the, the, the lower high here is, is probably um, down to that wick around 37-ish, 37 37K-ish, 37,500. Yeah, I mean, we need to get above that level before we can actually... Um, 37? Yeah. Um, 37 to right about 38. here? Yeah, around, around that mark before we can start rallying back up to 42. And then again, you know, like you said, oh, we've right. got heavy, heavy resistance up there too. So anyway, this sort of medium area here serves as another um, level, right? So if I, I'll just draw another trend line. So kind of like the RSI down here, you'll have sort of a, a bullish area up here and uh, sort of bearish down here, right? So you're saying we're going to be playing in this range, and if we can break through the 37 mark here, it, it will be more bullish. We'll probably play on the higher end of the range. Um, yeah, so we're playing in the lower half of the range right now, um, but so far it's looking really good. Um, you know, we would first have to reclaim the 37, um, and then once we reclaim that, uh, maybe come back for a retest on the 37, um, and that's when we can start really getting long um, and looking for moves up to up to 42k. Um, so I definitely think that's possible in, in the coming weeks. Um, you know, keep an eye out for that. RSI is pointing upwards on, on the four hour for now. Um, but there's definitely, um, you know, it, it's, it's definitely sort of like a HODL strategy right now. Um, don't sell your coins. You're going to be selling to, to smart money and institutions who want to buy up your coins for cheap. Um, you know, we're very, very close to a, a low, a macro low. So if you sell now, you're just selling at the lows. And that's not something you want to do. Yeah, I mean, for me, personally, I think this is uh, super bullish, um, as you mentioned. Actually, this is actually quite great because I want to be playing the, the range as well. Um, basically, accumulating um, coins at the bottom and selling at the top and then basically playing this range and stacking my coins, maybe two, three, five X um, until we can actually break through to 42. This is a great, great time to actually basically just triple quadruple your wealth or your net worth um, in the meantime, right? I mean, once, because this is an actual range, it's a little more predictable. You can actually, uh, if you, yeah, you basically make these calls correctly. Um, you can short from the top or just long from the bottom. And uh, basically that way, when we do break past 42 and go to Bitcoin's previous 60 high and break through 60, 60K, um, I mean, the, if you can accumulate more down here, the growth after that was going to be more exponential. So this is a really great moment for us. Um, just take full advantage of it. Um, just know, right, that there are going to be times where during this range that where it is going to, the price is going to drop again. So if you can predict that, you can use that in your favor and uh, really, really come out strong. For sure. Yeah, for sure. If you haven't created a trading account yet, we'll leave a link in the description below. Um, you can sign up and get a nice bonus there. Um, typically we use Binance. Um, you know, we do, we do a bit of leverage trading, but we don't recommend that for beginners. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can start on Binance, um, start with small, manage your risk. That's very, very important. Um, and, and don't forget to take profits. Take profits. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I definitely learned that the hard way. Yeah. Oh, um, still recovering actually. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're looking super bullish. Um, we'll update you again um, soon with, you know, what we think is going to happen. Um, but yeah, um, just hold, hold on to your coins. Don't sell them. And um, we'll see you next time on the Daily Close. Yes. See you next time on the Daily Close.